In today's video, we're talking about the battle of the small drones of DJI Mini 2 versus the Fimi X8 Mini. Let's get into the video. So I've done a video recently where I reviewed the Fimi X8 Mini. We're going to put it up against its number one competitor. And the reason why this drone is probably even here, and that's the DJI Mini series. And this is the DJI Mini 2. So is this Fimi X8 a potential problem for the DJI Mini 2, or is it no competition whatsoever? So I'm going to go through, through some of the points today and then let you know what my decision is at the end, whether you should buy this drone or not. Let's go. So if talking price, the DJI Mini 2 is currently around about the £419, $449 mark. And that's for the standard drone to the DJI Mini 2 with the controller and nothing else. Whereas the Fimi X8 strangely comes with two different batteries. The standard is around about £330 in the UK, so roughly around about $400. But that battery is 258 grams, so you can't fly that restriction free in a lot of countries. So it's really bizarre why that even exists for me that shouldn't exist so you have to then buy the pro version which is around about the 370 pound mark still cheaper than this yes but not by much so which would you buy if you're going to want this drone and you want to fly it under that 250 gram category so less restrictions you're going to want to pick up the pro version which i'm testing today so regards to specs, what are the similarities between these? And on paper, the Fimi X8 Mini you'll see has some really interesting and good specs. But just like I mentioned with other drones which are coming out, it's like the Xenon Mini Pro, if that ever releases, it's not all about the specs on paper. It's about how that actually performs in real life. So specs wise, we've talked about price. So let's have a look at some of the other specs. So both going to be around about the 30 minute mark. Both have a very similar range. The weight we've already talked about 238 grams for the Mini 2. And depending on which version you get, you're going to be wanting to get the Pro version, which is 249 grams. Both have a max speed of 35 miles per hour. Neither of these have obstacle avoidance. And then the high resolution modes, so you've got 4K 30 on both of these. Megapixels, both going to have a 12 megapixel camera. Both have a very similar sensor size, both able to take JPEG and raw images, and both have a maximum video bitrate of 100 megabits per second each. So very similar there. But the Fimi X8 Mini also has the follow me mode, which is like a quick shot mode and HDR video, whereas the DJI Mini 2 just has DJI quick shots. So on paper, the Fimi X8 Mini there is a clear winner by having those extra features. But as I discussed in the earlier video where I talked about this and reviewed this, it's not great, which we'll talk about very soon. So we're gonna go through some of these features and I'll show you some video clips as I do this. But with relation to these drones, they are both small drones, so they need to have good wind resistance. So today was a really windy day outside on the beach. So I took both of these drones up and you can see both did okay, but the Fimi X8 Mini certainly doesn't have the same wind resistance Distance. it was moving about a hell of a lot up and down side to side and it wasn't really secure now that doesn't give me a lot of confidence to be able to fly this even in strong winds it's around about the 30 mile an hour winds today and there was some severe gusts the DJI Mini 2 was a lot more stable in the wind which given gives you more confidence to fly and able to be able to fly for longer in different scenarios so wind resistance the DJI Mini 2 is a clear winner there for me Video quality, both have 4K 30, but when I look at both of these through the memory card, the, the DJI Mini 2 just looks more natural straight out of the gate. I'm not saying it's perfect. The 1.4.8 current update on this drone as it stands does oversaturate the footage a lot but nowhere near as much as what the Fimi X8 does. That is just so oversaturated that every single clip has to be brought down significantly. When you look at both of these through the actual app as well, the Mini 2 just looks really decent quality, whereas it's really poor looking quality. Even though it's meant to be 720p feedback, that when you look at it through the app, it doesn't look the best. It's only when you see it through the memory card thinking, oh, that's actually all right. It doesn't have different FPS modes like the X8 Mini, that's good. You can record at 90 FPS, which is really great to see. The Mini 2 tops out at 60, but the slow-mo on the Mini 2 is by no means bad. If you're really wanting that slow-mo footage, but you're willing to sacrifice some of that video quality, then the X8 Mini is there. But for me, it's a close one, but the Mini 2, video quality-wise, is certainly the best. 
picture quality, they both have 12 megapixel cameras. So you would think that's the same. Again, through the apps, the Mini 2 has photos, panorama mode, has AEB bracket photos, whereas the X8 Mini doesn't have as many options. And again, it's really similar to what we just said about the video, the photos coming out of the Mini 2, with especially with the raw photos as well, even though both can do this just straight away. If you want to just go and put them onto Instagram, they're just ready to put on. And the photo quality is normally spot on with the Mini 2. The X8 Mini, again, is good. It's nothing bad to say about it, but it is not as good as this. So ease of use, I've thrown this one in because it's not all about that actual video quality up in the air. It's about how quick we can grab one of these drones, get to that location and start flying. The X8 Mini certainly isn't my ease of use contender for the year. No way. By the time you get this and put it up in the air, it does take longer. You know, the app isn't as intuitive. I wish I could show you through some of the screen recordings, but for some reason, when I would do a screen record with this, it doesn't work all the time or it crashes the app. So the actual ease of use of, from, from my point of view, of being able to screen record this for YouTube, that's a non-starter because I just can't screen record and show you. But it's also about getting the thing set up. So this you know it takes longer to get a satellite connection so we can't get it in the air as quick and the ease of use in relation to the app everything on the screen on the dji mini 2 is nicely laid out you know it doesn't take up loads of the screen we have a good image of the screen and then the options at the top and bottom it's all nicely laid out and set up and we know where all the different functions are and they're quick and easy to get to Whereas the menu system on the X8 Mini is a bit of a minefield, although there are loads of settings and options and that's great. They're all a bit over there. It's a bit like the Sony cameras. The menus are just, just take you so long to find one thing. If I want to activate sports mode, I've got to go through one menu to the next menu, scroll all the way down to find sports mode. I just want to be able to just flick on the switch on the remote controller and get it. And I can't. So the ease of use, the flying experience in the air, the enjoyment of flying it, the Mini 2 wins yet again. So extra features, they both have the quick shots modes, they're both very similar. The X8 Mini, as I've said on the first video, if you have not checked that out, go and have a look. It's got pretty much exactly the same quick shots as the Mini 2, and that's great to see, but they are not as good. I'm not bashing this at all, but they're just not. And he's a firmware update and they will be great. So it's good to see that. What I love to see on the X8 Mini is that they've gone forward and pushed forward to get this quick shots mode, this active track mode. So we've got a front and a side of his active track. Now in paper, on paper, that sounds great. But again, I can't show you the screen recording, but I did on the first video and where it did work on that occasion. Uh, it's not the best, you know, if there's any object that I was showing you, I'll just put a video on the clip here. So I was walking, but there was some actual rocks just underneath me and then some steps above me and trying to get it to lock onto me was really hard. And I think my seventh attempt, it actually managed to lock and then follow me. Same with my daughter on the beach because there was different obstacles behind her. You know, it doesn't lock. You've got to get the height of the drone spot on. If you get it too low, it'll say, you know, the altitude is not high enough, get it too high. It's not, you know, it's got to be spot on. And then it says the camera angle isn't right. So it's not brilliant. It's not easy to set up. It's certainly not like a DJI 2S where you just fly near somebody, automatic registers them, click plus, and that's them trapped. It's not, it's very fiddly. It's great to see, and I did say in my first video that it has really good potential that, that this could be better. And this is the best selling feature for this of those options, 100%. But at the moment, they're just not there. There's 60% of the way there. The, the ingenuity of it is great. The option to have it there is great, but it has to perform. And at the moment, it doesn't perform. So for extra features wise, this wins, but it needs to be better. All right, so flying experience. So the experience with both manufacturers, so the FIMI and DJI are both great manufacturers. I've had DJI drones a hell of a long time going back to the Phantom series, Sparks, the Pros. So I just love being able to get the drone in the air using the app, be able to put it onto my phone or laptop and then edit it straight away or show it off. It's, it's so easy to use. Whereas this, I've talked about in the first video, Every time you put a memory card in, unless it's a U3 memory card, it won't work. And then once you do put a memory card in, you pretty much have to format it every single time. And the first time I did that, all the footage, when I put it onto my laptop, wasn't there. It was, it was just 
error, error, error on every single video. So just imagine that I've gone to a video shoot like they did at Derwent Water recently. So some stunning videos in a brilliant location. I got all the way home hours later. I put it on. I can't wait to see that footage, and it's all not there. It, you know that for me, it would just put me off. I'd be like, this drone is gone. So the confidence to fly that, that just knocked it straight away. After that, it's worked a few times. All right, it's been okay, but. It, all that needs to happen is one time for it not to work and that could potentially cost you a lot of money or you lose all that actual memories. So also when the drone was in the air, you get some random messages through the app giving you warning messages when there isn't really a warning, you know, telling you things when there isn't really there. The apps crashed on me a few times. So the DJI Fly app is certainly, as I've told you, not perfect, but it's a lot better than the Fimi app. So that experience of flying the drone, having that confidence again, the DJI Mini 2 100% wins. Okay, so just to wrap it up, so if I was in the market for a drone under 250 grams, and we're looking at price as well as a big dealer in this, so 419 for the Mini 2, 360, 370 for the Fimi X8 Mini. Remember, you're gonna need that pro version if you want to stay under that 250 gram limit. So is there enough difference for 50 pounds? Yes, if I was to buy one of these, the DJI Mini 2 would 100% be the one for everything I've just pointed out before. The spec of it, the flying performance, the 4K quality, just being able to ease of use, get the memory card out of the drone or use the Fly app, put it onto your editor program and away you go, you've got that footage. There's too many glaring little niggly issues with this currently. It could be better. The firmware updates on this could make this drone better. If this has better active track performance and it can track things better maybe they re-ramp the app and make the actual app look better then that's also good there was one other thing i forgot to mention when i was flying this before this has a 30 minute actual battery life but this thing here so although this is intuitive because you move it to put your remote control in it doesn't have any way in the, the same battery capacity as the remote control that comes with the dji mini 2 so when i was flying this this drone earlier this actually went flat before the before the actual drone so after about 15 minutes i started to get a low battery warning and this was fully charged so again no confidence in flying this drone over this drone it's not a bad drone by any stretch but out of the two this one wins so the elephant then in the room is the DJI Mavic Mini. I no longer have that drone because it's quite dated now, but it was a fantastic drone. The signal did let it down, but if you're gonna be flying quite close to you and you just want photos and video drone for your family on holidays, and you're wanting something out of budget for less than what this drone costs, I would probably still go with that. It doesn't have 4K 30, it was 2.7K is the max resolution. So. If you're really on a budget, the DJI Mini 1, Mavic Mini, I would still pick, or the Mini SE in a few countries if you can get it. I would get that rather than this. But for 50 pounds extra, the Mini 2, for me, I would 100% get that rather than this drone. So I hope you found that helpful, guys. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you have this drone? What do you think? You know, a few people have said you did get this, but you sent it back. It's not a knock on this drone, it just it needs extra work. It needs some firmware updates and this could, could be really good. It's got potential. But at the moment, this is the best sub 250 gram drone. Take care guys, see you later, bye bye.